Howdy fellow humans, Bad Mark with Mac Tech Keyboards and another transmission from Keyboard World today. Today I'm going to be doing a mod. I've been putting this aside for a while. It's a long story. I'll try to make it short. I know I'm not very good at that. Um, a while back I came across this uh, drop control on eBay. Or drop alt. I'm sorry. Drop alt. Uh, the alt control is the... Uh, the TKL, I think. I don't know. I can't keep track of it. Anyway, um, I'm guessing the person didn't know what they had. Uh, it was listed pretty low, around $30. I got it, um, and then they realized that one of the uh, magnetic feet that come with it wasn't on there. It, it, it wasn't in the box, and they apparently didn't even know that there was there was more stuff underneath the, the cardboard box. Um, long story short, I ended up getting this this keyboard for basically what I paid for shipping, uh, which is really cheap. But I tested the sockets out, and I was like, okay. I was like, yeah, I'll get around to modding it, but I didn't. Uh, come a few weeks back, about four, three or four weeks ago, I came across a high-profile case for the drop control, also on eBay. And this one was listed uh, with shipping, uh, 35 bucks. And I, I was like, screw it. So for less than the price of what this high profile, I mean, it has the blocker. Now I know it's metal, so I know, I definitely know I'm gonna have to do a couple of uh, mods on it. So I decided I'm gonna take the PCB from this, uh, this drop control, drop alt. I don't know why I want to keep calling it the control. Um, it is a three pin hot swap, which is yay. But I've got switches. I don't need to cut, cut the legs off to put in here. So this is um, probably not an exciting mod, but I want to see, you know, I know that I know there's drama around them, but I, uh, to get, I mean, not one, but two metal cases for less than the retail price I mean, if I can make it sound decent I like 65% they're good boards and this one's already you know nice and hefty and I'm pretty sure that I can uh, I could make it sound good um, I don't have a sound test with this like I said I didn't even bother to put switches in it. I just tested to make sure that all the hot swap sockets are connected and they work so um, let's do it let's uh, open this puppy up I, I've never opened up one of these before either but I don't think besides the acrylic because I mean this they both have this um it's a RGB diffuser layer the acrylic diffuser so let's go ahead and take a look see here and uh, and these are all the screws looks like it yeah that's uh all right we have a daughter board Nope, we just have, nope, no daughter board. This is definitely a, uh, just a, I guess just a tray mount, top mount. All right, so, doesn't seem to be much here. We do have some studs to make sure that, because we're going to do a Tempest mod on it. Um, I believe we do have a reset button for QMK. That though, is it on this side or is it on this side? There's the, the alright. So we want to make sure to keep that reset button clear because that had the hole in it, and this one seems to have the hole in it as well, so that you can hit it with something. So we want to keep that clear. Um, and then we'll make the holes. So yeah, mass drop ink, alt production 600. 718. Ooh. Copyright 2018. I wonder if this is that old. Wow. Like I said, I already tried it. But. Well, let's get to it. Does it just pop out? Or is it. Oh, it does? Alright. So, let's go ahead and uh, I'll put you back together. Obviously, I mean, only a drop 
control board's going to fit in there. Um, so yeah, this one already has the side lighting. Obviously, this one had that layer too, but this is more of a high profile. And it's more of a substantial case, so we'll have a lot more room to to play around with, or at least I hope we will. I'm pretty sure we will, or we should anyway. We might not. I might be completely wrong. So all right, let's put the PCB in a safe spot for right now. Let's put you back together the way you game. So. This one. So now we have an empty flow profile case. So we'll just go ahead and set that guy aside. And well, this definitely weighs more. Um, we're definitely going to be uh, taking care of those stabs. But other than. Huh. Yeah, the low profile. Uh, I was just trying to see the low profile actually does make up for the um, blocker by just having a bigger space right there. Never noticed, but again, I didn't ever put keys on here. So let's go ahead and open you up. Huh? Looks like it indeed. Oh, all right. So now we have this. Oh, fuser layer is like stuck to the um no we can't have that not like the pcb sits that low no. i'm guessing we have to pull up the diffuser layer but there's the yeah that's got to be below the pcb yeah because yeah all right we got to pull this off this is just going to be much they're actually asking for this board retail to be quite honest with you i mean it's nice aluminum and everything but it's north facing it's three pin it has qmk that's good but i mean they've obviously been making this board for a minute now all right first here i'm going to go ahead and we're going to give this pcb some pe love yeah i'm just going to do a rough outline here. I like to, when possible. Just, uh, and obviously, it doesn't have to be perfect, but we don't want it causing any issues of binding. So, I'm uh, just gonna do a outline over here with a sharpie. Wee, wee. Oh. and down we go. So. This. Did we make you green? No, we didn't make the PCB green. Let's go ahead. Oh, tiny. We can use this for this. Let's go ahead and cut you. Since we're not going to need where the ports are, we're just going to skip that little hump and just cut straight across. And just keep going. It's going to help us get a little bit of pop from this. Because, uh, I mean, we don't really have much but metal in there. So we're not going to have hall in this, but you know, we want some sound. We don't want just dead clack. So, all right. Looks like we could probably just trim the edges off. And this one's got the folded edge, so we'll just go ahead and trim just about two millimeters off, roughly. I think that will give us enough room. Like I said, we don't have to cover every single inch. We just want to make sure that we're not going to cause any binding. All right, that's looking perfect to me. So I think now we can go ahead. Oh, yeah, we want to tape this independently. I was thinking I was going to tape it while I was in here, but I think I might have issues if I do that. So I'm going to go ahead and flip it over, and I'm going to see how many layers I can get away with. Uh, I would usually do three, but seeing as we're working with limited space, I mean, we literally have the height um, that this is, that these studs are. Roughly three, two and a half, three millimeters maybe? 
So once the tape is, you know, it's not like the tape doesn't go, you know, avoids the socket. So it's going to be protruding some. And like I said, I want to keep that square open. And I obviously need to count for the two, three, four, five, six, seven holes. That same amount of holes that's on the case. I got to account for those holes. So, and I also have to account for the LEDs on the border because obviously I don't want you know that covered up. So let's get started on this uh, different kind of Tempest mod. Like I said, I also need to ensure that there's going to be enough room around the holes for the acrylic frame to sit in properly. this is the room that I've got between this and the plate but first some um, stabs nowadays have been coming already pre-clipped or f with flat legs you see those little feet they like to tap onto the um, the PCB so and they really it's not like they'll fall out if you uh, clip them off so this is something that I haven't really had to do in a while to be quite honest with you, having to clip the legs. So, yeah, that's uh, these are some pretty basic stabilizers. So, I'm gonna still have people ask me about this. Um, Corball actually made a good point because uh, one of these videos I'd I talked about how you know the this tape is used on in plumbing you know for threading and and so if it can withstand that kind of pressure it should be able to withstand you know the kind of pressures that are you know, minimal pressures that are going to be applied to a keyboard stabilizer and he made a very good point in that um, these yes do withstand pressure but they go on threads oops a little too hard um you know because these are wrapped around threads they're put on unions between like say um different faucets uh, handles of the extensions the the um shower heads basically anything that's going to, to either connect running water you know have water running water run through it this is used um when it's screwed not when it's uh, uh sweat or welded so um so he made made the good point that you know this is meant for threaded metal not for you know really smooth wires so i am counting i have taken dates i actually uh um have some that i've set up specifically to come back and take a look at three months and three months six months and then a year because i want to see how long they hold up um because i do i mean i i tried several mods including holy mod and um This tape's not wanting to work with. Uh, another one of the mods I did, I forgot if it had a specific name, but it was the um, mod where you take the uh, the heat shrink, the heat shrink um, wire ends, 
that are used for like covering up, you know, when you solder two wires together. The guy, I know they got a specific name. They're just, I just call them heat shrink, sh heat shrink uh, sleeves. Um, I'm sure they have a more technical name. But anyway, I was using those for a minute, and I mean, they they didn't go anywhere. That's for sure because you're, <laughs> you know, heat shrinking it. But it for sure made the um, space bar uh, bind up. Or, I mean, the space bar, the stabilized key, bind up and become sluggish. I mean, it wasn't like it was stopping, but it was definitely slow, and it was almost muted because it was um, it was presenting enough of a of an impedance. 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 Uh, so where the keycap wasn't even striking uh, the plate. So while it definitely got rid of rattle, see that's not a good job. I don't know if you could see that. See it's thinner on one end than the other. Uh, that's why I continued to do it. I wanted to show you that's not how it should look. How it's bumpy. You want to make sure that this tape I don't know why I'm having trouble with it tonight. Usually I'm pretty good with it, but sometimes it's just, and it's later on in the day. That's probably why. Um, I think my, my, my brain is basically shut down and my body's following right along with it. Time for old man to, to go to sleep. <laughs> get up in the morning, get some coffee. So, Anyway, I have a particular set of stabilizers on a keyboard that I use on a regular basis that I'm going to check at three months, six months, and 12 months, and then about, I want to say three, maybe four weeks right now. But basically, I did it, even though I had some that I'd already done and I had the dates on them, um, I think I'd gotten a little better by the time that Kerbal made that comment to me so I specifically the next board that I did that was the very next day I marked the date and that's the one that I'm going to be using as the one to test anyway because um, <clears throat> I've had others report to me as well that especially the holy mod um, even if you use really good tape after a while um, and sometimes not much of a while that uh I knew I had smaller scissors around here. That definitely helps. Um, with the Holy Mod, I've definitely had the tape come loose. And that's a sure thing to quickly bind up the... Um, uh, bind up the stabilizer. And make it to where uh, it's going to either get sluggish or completely basically stop like you press on the key and the key just stays <laughs> uh, because that piece of tape comes loose on the inside of the housing um, you know that you stick in here in the hole or this side I should say oh, uh, you know what I mean if you if you know what I'm talking about with the holy run that piece of tape will come loose and then because it's not sticking anymore it's kind of just a piece of tape wedged in between a metal bar and a plastic piece that's moving anytime that key is pressed. So it's going to it's going to fold up, it's going to bunch up, it's going to do all kinds of funky things that just uh, is not going to help that stabilizer anymore. So to me, the Holy Mod is just a it, it's something you're going to have to come back to eventually and, and fix. So uh, that's why I stopped doing it. And the plumber's mod has worked. Now, don't get me wrong. I actually do have a couple keyboards that still have the uh, heat shrink uh, sleeves, uh, electric heat shrink sleeves on them. And, I mean, I did lube the crap out of them. And they work. But these are stabilizers that were, I mean... They made these look like drawers. 
how bad they were, but they were, you know. Um, $8 UC boards, I believe. They were from really cheap, cheap boards. All right, so now I've got these here. And since I've got the uh, side clippers handy, I might as well use them. I like to have a nice and flat edge. So I've got the stabilizer, uh, blah, blah, blah. the housings of the stabilizer. Let me see. Yeah, these are definitely the older ones. And here's the top. It's jumpy. I got it in the right way. So I'll go ahead and open up the super lube. One of the legs past the bend, nice and greasy. Don't need to bring all the bottle with you, but enough grease. Only time that a little extra isn't really gonna hurt. It might get messy, but all right. Push it in. Do that with this side. All right. Go at the top. Oh, make sure we get it in the hole. And push down and in. Make sure we're oriented the right way. All right. This is literally the only space that we have for, because I mean, it's, uh, sorry, it's a flat bottom we're going to be putting on top of it. I thought the best thing for this situation would be just a little bit of polyfill. Well, I'm going to put this up there. Why not? I mean, we got a little bit of hollowness. Obviously, it, there's going to be some metal. I'm hoping that the force break mod and this will help capture some of those high pitches. So I'm not going to go too crazy with this. Just enough to basically cover the areas. Try not to get to the screw holes. All right, and now to make sure. I 
I see one piece of tape edging out. I'm gonna fix it. it doesn't bug me. Silver theme, and I'm gonna go, believe it or not, with some Aqua Silvers. Um, so let me go ahead and pop these in, and next we'll be back with the um, keycap sound, sound test. Done. So we've got the uh, light going on, and we've got switches in here. Now I do have a. I was going to keep with the silver gray theme, but I checked, and unfortunately, um, huh. unfortunately, uh, it does not have um, sixty-five percent layout compatibility. It's TKL and full um full size only so i decided why not give this the proper treatment and go with susu watari now this is not exactly silver but i think it's going to look very nice on this board so let's go ahead and load this up and see how it looks back shortly with that after a brief interruption from none of our sponsors because we don't have any 